In this video, we will be looking at how your machine, how your computer represents numbers okay, and a few phenomena which can go wrong when we think that the way the computer processes numbers is you know the way we do things on paper intuitively. Okay. So, this idea is uh, something called overflow and underflow. We will also look at another idea called condition number. Uh, most of the examples not the slides, but just the examples that we have taken is from a good book and an introductory book for numerical methods by Stephen Chapra. So, let us look at the idea of machine arithmetic. So, in the previous slides uh, when we were doing optimization, we were doing it theoretically. So, if you want to find out the minimum of a function, you will simply say that uh, the gradient at the minimum or at the optimum is 0. Now, in order to do this, if you were to do it on paper or if you do it using symbols, you, you will assume usually real number arithmetic. Okay? You will assume that you can calculate digits to as much precision as you want. We will also assume, you know, you will say that, you know, if I differentiate x square with respect to x, I am going to get 2 x. But in practice, remember, we do not deal with symbols. We in fact, do not even deal with images as I have said multiple times so far, we actually deal with only numbers okay? and specifically numbers of finite precision. As you will see, uh, this will start making sense as you go a little bit further. This kind of arithmetic is called finite precision arithmetic or uh, machine arithmetic. Okay? Uh, in some cases, you can call it floating point arithmetic which is the most common as far as we are concerned in the special case of floating point numbers. Floating point numbers mean the number of uh, the numbers where we deal with real numbers rather than with integers. Okay? Now, the fact that we have only a finite precision can actually have surprisingly important and sometimes surprisingly catastrophic consequences. Okay? So, let us take one such recent example. So, the example is that of Ariane 5. This is a European launch vehicle. Its very first test in the Ariane 5 configuration, you know, there were of course, Ariane 1 to 4 uh, was on June 4th, 1996. Okay. So, the launch seemed normal until the first 37 seconds. Okay. After that, dramatically, I would recommend that you take a look at the video on YouTube or something. If you simply put Ariane 5 you know launch or something you will you will get this video. So, if you take uh, a look at what happens at approximately 37 seconds after launch the rocket suddenly turned by 90 degrees incorrectly this was not planned of course. Um, the boosters were ripped apart and the vehicle basically it had a self destruction um, instruction sitting there and it self destructed automatically. So, this is a giant loss. Okay? So, uh, approximately you know estimates vary between 350 million to 500 million uh, US dollars. It is perhaps one of the most expensive uh, problems that was caused due to software failure. Okay. So, simple software failure uh, caused this and what really happened if you dig into it was most of it uh, was ignorance or not ignorance really people did not really adequately take care for the fact that we are doing finite precision arithmetic rather than real arithmetic in some sense. Okay? You will see how that happened a little bit later. So, let us look at this. A machine has a finite number of bits. Okay? Unlike you know how a human being writes, if you require more precision, you simply keep on adding digits. A machines have a, a, a finite number of predetermined number of digits. Okay? Um, you can think of these digits, you know, whenever you store a number, you can think of them as individual boxes and in each box either 0 or 1 will be stored. As you know for most part all of our arithmetic is done in uh, binary basically the 0 or 1 system every single thing um, is actually represented in terms of zeros and 1s that is both the power as well as as you can sometimes see there can be a problem. So, let us take a simple integer. Okay. So, if you have an integer like 173 which is what we would call it in base 10 you can now write it in binary, you would have all done this in school. Okay. Uh, you will have this long representation because it can be written as 2 power 0, this is of course, the representation for 2 power 0, 2 power 1 there is no representation plus 2 power 2, 2 power 3 
2 power 4 has no representation 2 power 5 plus 2 power 7 can be written as 173. Okay. So, as far as the machine is concerned it is going to look like stuff like this. So, you are going to have about 8 digits here okay. and you will have some 1s and some zeros, and each box can either store a 0 or it can store a 1. Okay. Now, suppose you have instead of 173 you have something like minus 173. Now, what are you going to do? Um, so, what we do in terms of representation in a machine is to call use something called a sign bit. Okay. The sign bit will be another box up front here though we will see uh, you know how we actually do it. So, this if it is 1 the machine will interpret it as negative, if it is 0 it will assume that the integer is positive. Okay. Now, I had 8 boxes here, but let us say I have a 16 bit machine or a 16 bit representation, 16 bit simply means I have 16 boxes now. Okay. So, you would have something of this sort. Remember the very first one the leftmost digit uh, bit is what is called the sign bit. If it is 1 it basically means it is negative. The rest of it essentially represents magnitude. In this case I have just copied this from there to here. So, this number will, will be interpreted as minus 173 the minus comes from here 173 comes because all these are 0 and this is 173. Okay. Now, this has an implication okay. the implication is that there is a maximum number that you can represent on the number uh, on the machine okay. that is because if you run out of digits or run out of boxes to store your number you can no longer represent a large number. This is somewhat similar to uh, calculators. Okay. So, if you have a calculator with 8 digits, you cannot store a number which is greater than 8 digits. Of course, we will account for exponents a little bit later even in this video, but the main point that I am going to make here and if you get nothing else uh, in this particular video, please take away this one single point that there is a maximum number that the machine can store accurately and there is also a minimum number that the machine can store accurately. Okay. So, in this case if you see the maximum minimum for 16 bit okay. remember one of the bits has been used up for sign. So, you have only 15 left. So, you can represent 2 power 15 minus 1 which comes to plus minus 32000 something. Okay. So, similarly if I increase from 16 bit to 32 bit I will get 2 power 32 minus 1 okay, or 2 power 31 minus 1 etcetera. Now, this was about integers you have similar representations for floating point once again you are free to skip these slides as long as you understand particularly that there is a minimum and maximum number on the computer even a floating floating point number that you can use on the computer. Okay. So, real numbers can also be represented in binary. So, let us say you have the number 5.5 it can be written as 4 plus 1 plus 0 0.5, 0 0.5 of course is 2 power minus 1. So, you would write it as, so you notice this representation 1 0 1 point 1 because after point what comes is the negative digits which is similar to how we do deal with decimals because after the decimal whatever comes here suppose you have 0.3 this is 3 into 10 power minus 1 in the base 10 representation and one digit after that would be you know 10 power minus 2 similarly here too. Now, we have a more compact notation which we usually call the scientific notation even in calculators. So, instead of simply writing it in terms of decimal places you can actually get more numbers if you represent it this way plus minus some number times the base power and exponent. So, s is what is called the significant which con contains all the significant digits of the number, b is the base we are using which is let us say if you are using base 10 it is 10, if it is 2 if you are it is a binary uh, digit then it is base 2 um, 
and E is the exponent that we are using. So, for example, if you have the number 0 0.001234, you would write it as 1.234 10 power minus 3, where 1.234 is S, 10 is the base and exponent is minus 3. Okay. Now, it turns out um, that in binary you can get uh, as I talked last time, if there is a maximum minimum number on the computer, you would like to increase this maximum minimum as much as possible. For a binary number, the first digit will always be 1, okay, because if it is 0, we ignore it. We are only going to look at significant digits starting from 1. So, we remove that 1 away and instead of s, we write it as 1 plus f into 2 to the power e and this gives you a little bit of extra numbers to store. So, for example, the same 5.5, if I write it as 101.1 uh, in binary, this will be 1.011 into 2 to the power minus 2 and this can be written, um, uh, it, this should be 2 to the power plus 2, I am sorry. Okay. So, this is 2 to the power plus 2. So, this is can be written as 1 plus f, this is the base and this is the exponent plus 2 f is called the mantissa and e is of course, the exponent. Now, note that the numbers that we have given whether it is f or whether it is e now need separate bins. So, you have to store this 0 0.011, you also have to store this 2 into separate bins. Okay. So, for a 64 bit storage scheme which is fairly standard for what is called double precision, we store digits this way you keep 1 bit for the sign, you keep 11 bits for the signed exponent that is this e okay. and you keep 52 bits for the mantissa which is for f. Okay. Now, this is what is called an IEEE standard, there is a standardized way of storing this, you know you can make other choices, but this is the standard that people have agreed to on how to take 64 bit and store floating point numbers. Okay. So, let us look at double precision. Um, double precision is a standard precision used for real number data. So, if you use MATLAB, this is the default. In other cases, let us say C, C++, etcetera, you have two options. There is something called float and there is something called double precision. Once again, for most scientific uh, computations, we tend to use double precision to be as accurate as possible. Uh, you will find this within GPUs also single precision versus double precision. Okay. So, remember that for 64 bits we had already seen the 1, 11, 52 split. split. Uh, this was for the sign bit, this is for exponent again signed exponent remember the exponent by itself can have signs okay. and this is for the mantissa okay, which was f. Once again, since there are only limited boxes for storing the exponent, there is once again a maximum as well as a minimum positive number that can be represented. Okay. Remember, we have now 11 bits for the signed exponent. So, you have to remove 1 bit for the sign and you will get 2 power 10 is 1024. So, you will have from 1023 to minus 1022, that is the range with, within which you can represent the exponents. Remember, we are only talking about exponents in this particular video. So, the, the largest number that you can represent is, let us say I have 52 digits here. So, I take 1.11111, this is in binary and I can go to 2 power 1023 that is the maximum that you can represent within uh, uh, as a double precision 64 bits. Okay. You go above this using double precision, any computer that tries to use double precision will either give nan which is called not a number or it will give inf which is infinity. Okay. So, depending on what the compiler is like. Similarly, you have a smallest number, this is once again a smallest positive number just above 0, what is the smallest number you can get? 1.000 into 2 to the power minus 1022. Okay. So, this is approximately 2.2 into 10 to the power minus 308. Okay. This seems like a very wide range, but sometimes you can actually go beyond this very easily. 
So, I have flashed on the screen a simple example from MATLAB. MATLAB has a variable called real max that tells you what the maximum number is. You can see this number here okay, approximately 1.8 into 10 to the power 308. This is the maximum number that MATLAB can represent. Similarly, you have a minimum number which is approximately 2.2 into 10 to the power minus 308. Okay, so, this is from MATLAB. Now, just like range, you have a slightly different idea called precision. So, let us first start with an example. Okay. So, let us say I have square root 2 and once again I am writing this in MATLAB, you will see some set of digits. Okay. You will see a standard set of numbers thrown here and let me add a certain amount of error, a small number to it. Okay. So, this number here is 10 power minus 14. I am adding this here. What you will see between here which is the original and this which is the case with the error, you will see all digits are the same except for this digit which was 0 here, it became 1 here because I added 10 power minus 14. Okay. So, now let us say if I added instead of 10 power minus 14, suppose I added 10 power minus 16, what is it that we would expect? So, since this was 10 power minus 14, 10 power minus 16 is this. So, suppose I add 10 to the power minus 16, this 5 should actually turn to a 6, right? that is what we would expect. So, let us see what happens. So, suppose I have 10 power minus 16, I add it to square root 2, surprisingly enough the 16th digit stays the same. Okay. Now, why did this happen? We can now look at another example. Okay. So, let us say a is 1, b is minus 1. This error once again I will call it error is 10 power minus 16. So, suppose I do a plus b plus error, it gives me the right thing because a plus b is 0, 0 plus error is 10 power minus 16. But suppose I change the order Okay, b plus error instead of that I write error plus b. Okay, we know that uh, addition is you know you have distribution, you have associativity, commutativity all those properties are there in this case commutation between b plus error and error plus b. It should give you the same result, but it gives you 0 okay, which also seems to be happening here instead of adding error it is actually adding 0. Now, why does this happen? The reason is notice in both these cases even the mantissa not just the exponent even though the exponent allows you to go till 10 power minus 308 the mantissa is also limited the mantissa is limited up to 52 bits okay so the mantissa remember is 1 point something 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 the number of boxes i have to store here into 2 to the power e the e we saw in the previous slide now we are looking at this portion okay what happens here so, double precision now is now given by 2 to the power minus 52. Okay, so, that is the minimum that you can represent which turns out to be approximately 2.2 into 10 to the power minus 16. So, any number below this will simply disappear. Okay. So, just to give you an example, now suppose you have a calculator and it has let us say it is a very bad calculator and it has 3 digits only that it can represent on the screen. So, 0 0.00. Now, suppose I give you the number 0 0.001, there is no space for it to store it. To give you another example, suppose I have 1.00 plus 0 0.001, what will happen is I take 1.00, it has used up my 3 digits and if I give 0 0.001, this is out of range. What it will do is, it will simply give me 1.00, this cannot come down at all. Okay. Now, how does that affect this? Notice that when I do a plus b, a plus b is already 0. So, this is the order in which the machine will do the algorithm, uh, it will do the addition. a plus b is 0 plus error, it has enough space. Okay. It has 16 digits for you to be seeing 10 to the power minus 16. 
However, when I do a plus error plus b something similar happens. I have 1.0000 16 digits plus 0 0.0001 no place to add it. So, it basically sees this as a plus error as simply 1 and b is minus 1 which is why it gives 0. Okay. So, if you go to MATLAB once again this smallest number the restriction that is given by the mantissa is called machine epsilon. Okay. So, if you simply put EPS in uh, MATLAB you will get this value as you can see it is approximately 2.22 into 10 to the power minus 16. Okay. So, this is the smallest number that the machine can represent uh, in terms of floating point additions and subtractions. Okay. Now, we come because of the combination of these two because of the combination of the range and the precision the main thing once again main takeaway is there are smallest and biggest numbers that the machine can accurately add and subtract. Okay. Now, you have two types of errors. So, an underflow error is what happens in case numbers near 0 are rounded off to 0. Okay. So, th this is the same kind of example that we saw last time you had 1 to the power minus 16 10 to the power minus 16 when you add it to square root 2 nothing really happens here. So, effectively 10 to the power minus 16 is being rounded off to 0. Okay. So, you are not getting any addition here. So, here is a simple figure to represent this. So, let us say this is the max positive number that you can represent and this is the min positive number. this is the negative limit. When I call it negative max what I obviously mean is maximum in terms of absolute value. Okay. So, whenever you are kind of caught between these two limits. Okay. So, let us say minus 10 to the power minus 16 and 10 to the power minus 16 it is called underflow error. In some sense you can see this as going below the least count of the machine. Okay. So, just like our scale has a least count in most scales like 1 mm below that you cannot measure accurately. So, similarly below 10 power minus 16 for double precision you will have trouble. Okay. So, if you have numbers going below that and you do not account for them in terms of the exponent and this separately you are going to have trouble. Another thing that can happen in terms of underflow is you might have a divide by 0 error. Okay. So, even though your denominator is not really 0 but if it goes below your machine epsilon or you know even your uh, minimum 10 power minus 308 you can actually have divide by 0 errors. It can occur in many different ways. Okay. Overflow happens when you actually go above the maximum limit. Okay. So, let us see an example. So, let us say you have a simple expression we will see that this is a special case of something called soft max. as we move into the neural network portions, but let us say you have a simple function e power x 1 by e power x 1 plus e power x 2. Okay. Now, let us say x 1 is equal to x 2. In such a case this should simply give you half. Okay. Since x 1 is equal to x 2 you simply have e power x 1 by e power x 1 plus e power x 1. So, this is obviously half. So, let us try this in MATLAB. Let us say I take a vector this vector now is 5000 and 5000 these are just two numbers x 1 is equal to 5000 x 2 is equal to 5000 and I try this expression. I do e power x 1 by e power x 1 plus e power x 2 I get not a number. Now, why is that because e power 5000 has exceeded your maximum possible. So, even though the calculation is fairly simple you can do it by hand this is what I meant in the initial uh, slide of this uh, video which is there are certain things that you could do by hand very easily, but the machine uh, being dumb and being doing sequential uh, operations will simply do e power 5000 first and it will say well I cannot store it. So, this is not a number. Okay. Now, it turns out that there are ways of uh, tricking the machine into doing the right thing. Okay. So, I will just show one example here. So, instead of doing your calculations in terms of x we subtract out. Okay. So, z is 
x minus maximum of x okay, or z i is x i minus maximum over all i of x i. So, if you subtract that thing out, it turns out that this function does not change because you are simply up, uh, multiplying by e power minus max x on the numerator and the denominator. Now, if I write it that way and I do e power z 1 by e power z 1 plus z 2, I get back the right result. Okay. So, the point is if you simply wrote this in a code in your uh, program, if you are lucky nothing would happen, if you are unlucky you might get a not a number even though you might be confused about where this not a number came from. So, the fact that the machine has a maximum and a minimum can cause surprising errors. Okay. You might not have a formula problem, you might not have a compilation problem, but you could have a overflow or underflow problem because you have not accounted for uh, the way numbers are uh, registered. In fact, open AI one of the companies that works on AI. is now trying to exploit the fact that there is finite precision in order to come up with some machine learning algorithms. So, that is well beyond the scope of this course, but I just wanted to point that out. Okay. Now, it turns out that the Ariane 5 disaster which I started this video with was also due to a overflow problem. Okay. So, remember that it was all fine in the beginning and uh, the internal inquiry board uh, the report is actually available online. I have put a reference to that somewhere later here. Okay. So, this since it is a uh, French system, this I am going to call it SRI. It is actually inertial uh, reference system. So, the inertial reference system tells you, you know, which way the rocket is pointing very, very roughly. So, it, it had a variable just like we had the variable uh, soft in the previous slide. It had a variable called BH, which actually it used to determine the orientation of the rocket, is it pointing up, is it pointing down etcetera. And this orientation was represented by a floating point variable, a real number. Okay. Now, this variable was stored in a 64 bit floating point operation, okay. but uh, due to several internal reasons, part of the reason being that the previous one Ariane 4 used some 16 bit uh, um, uh, integers. So, what it had to do was it had to turn this B H from a 64 bit floating point number into a 16 bit signed integer. Now, this was not any problem for the previous version I have this is a mistake this should be Ariane 4. So, the previous version of this launch vehicle was Ariane 4 it was not a problem because all the numbers for the orientation were well within orientation speed etcetera were well, well within the limits of a 64 uh, for of a 16 bit integer. However, after 37 seconds, okay, it basically reached overflow. Okay. So, some number within the calculation actually went beyond the 16 bit limit. Okay. So, 16 bit non signed is 65,000, signed is 32,000. So, in either case, this number was exceeded due to the vast acceleration that was there in Ariane 5 in comparison to Ariane 4. So, some numbers were exceeded. And you can see now that because of that it essentially got confused. Okay. So, instead of going straight up the orientation was uh, misread, it actually turned and then the self destruct mechanism took over. Okay. So, in the words of the report, okay. so the report says that the internal you know inertial reference system software was caused from due to the conversion from 64 bit to 16 bit signed integer value. Okay. So, as is said here this had a value greater than what could be represented. So, this is classic overflow. So, so overflow caused the Ariane 5 disaster this is to tell you that um, though in the examples that I gave it seemed like extreme examples it can actually have very very real life effects. Okay. So, some similar problems have happened in other cases during Gulf War, etcetera. So, the fact that the machine is representing numbers in a finite precision have to be sometimes accounted for. Okay. So, if you are lucky it will almost never happen, but if you have a completely unexplainable phenomenon happening to you where everything seems to work on paper and it seems to track maybe sometimes it could be a underflow or overflow error. Thank you. So, the last topic 
in this video is that of condition number. Okay. So, the fact that you have limited precision which is what we have been looking at in the previous slides uh, can have many unexpected results some of them you already saw. So, let us take a simple case we are simply summing up s or this number 0 0.0001 and we are summing it up 10,000 times. Okay. So, what would you expect 0 0.0001 multiplied times 10,000 should be 1. Okay. If you actually execute this program you will find that it is not quite 1. Notice that there is some error in the last two places. Now, why does this happen? This is because precision has effects that propagate. Okay. What do I mean by that? Remember we are adding 0 0.0001, this is 10 power minus 4, this does not have an exact representation in binary. It has a repeating decimal representation in binary, so that the last digit when it gets chopped off has an actual effect. Okay. So, in that case as you add this problem in 10 power minus 4 in the 16 digit many many times the effect actually starts from here and starts leaking upwards towards the left. Okay. So, this effect of additive effect of precision can be particularly bad okay, if you have multiple calculations. So, I will show you one example. So, let us say you are solving a system of linear equations. Okay. So, let us give you an example. So, this is the system A let us say this is the matrix A 1, 2, 2 and 4.0000, there is a 1 okay, sitting somewhere in A. Okay. So, let us say my x is this 1 and minus 1 fairly simple example. Suppose I define B is equal to A times x, this of course means that x is equal to A inverse B. So, if I do x is A inverse B, I should recover x. I do not quite recover x, you can see that instead of 1, the effect propagated a little bit okay, about by 5 digits. Okay. Similarly, instead of getting minus 1, I got some error propagation. Okay. However, something even more serious can happen. Okay. Now, because typically you solve x is a inverse b, let us say I introduce an error in b. Okay. Now, instead of b being this, Suppose I added 0 0.01 okay, or subtracted 0 0.01. So, you can see that now between this and this I have made a small difference, small change in B. So, B goes to B plus delta B or B 1 is B plus delta B. Now, the question is here if I change B to B plus delta B, A remains the same what is the change in x? That is if my numbers remember since I am doing finite precision arithmetic you saw earlier that some numbers might not be exactly represented. Okay. So, if I make a small change in a number instead of storing 1 I store 1.00001 how much of a change will it make while uh, solving linear systems of equations. Okay. So, when you do this if I do x 1 is a inverse b 1, what I would expect is only a small change in x since I have made only a small change in b, but you can see this is a huge change. Okay. Now, from being 1 minus 1, it has actually turned into 10 power plus 8, the sign has changed minus 10 power 8 and 1 into 10 power 8. So, just a small change of 0 0.01 in B has caused a change of 10 power 8 in x. Okay. So, this is quite worrying. So, this is why we look at what is the nature of this matrix A. Okay. So, just like when you have division by numbers. So, suppose I have y equal to A divided by x and if uh, x is very, very small then small changes in A can cause small change uh, large changes in y. Similarly, if A is close to singular, a small change in B can actually be magnified by A. Okay. So, this is measured by something called the condition number. The condition number is defined as 
norm of A remember you can go back to our norm videos norm of A is some measure of A multiplied by norm of A inverse is given as condition number. For symmetric matrices there is an easy way of measuring this condition number okay, which is you find out the ratio the maximum ratio of eigenvalues which is find out the maximum eigenvalue in magnitude and divide by the minimum eigenvalue in magnitude and that tells you roughly how much uh, your answer is going to be magnified. So, for example, we can see that two decimal places were increased. Okay. So, this, this was increased to 10 power 8 which means there is an increase in 10 decimal places. So, basically you are magnifying an error by a factor of 10 power 10 and if you look at the condition number of this matrix just to clarify this. So, if you see condition number this is 10 power 11 and it tells you very roughly this is not very precise it tells you very roughly that your answers are going to be magnified by a factor of 10 power 11 that is the worst case scenario and we are hitting close to the worst case scenario here. Okay. So, in general if you have a high condition number this means you have a poor, poorly conditioned matrix and in certain softwares for example, for example, MATLAB will tell you you have a ill conditioned matrix. Ill conditioned means the condition number is really high and any small errors may be magnified very, very largely. Okay. So, in this video uh, just as a recapitulation we looked at a few ideas or a few implications of the fact that your numbers are not exactly represented as you might think that there is a finite amount of precision and that finite amount of precision has a minimum limit, a maximum limit and sometimes these uh, num uh, this imprecisions can multiply upon themselves and lead to large really poor effects. Thank you.